Do you find it frustrating having your palette horizontal, low down and far apart from your canvas, making it more difficult to mix and match colours? Well, in this video I'll show you how to make a vertical glass palette holder, mounted at eye level, right next to your canvas, for easier and more accurate colour mixing. Hi, I'm Will J. Bailey, and this is a channel of in-depth tutorials for artists and illustrators. Now, I love using glass palettes for oil painting. You just can't beat the way that paints and mediums mix on the surface, and how easy they are to clean up. And I've been using this one for a few years now, on a table next to my easel. But there is a problem with this setup, and it's something that really bugs me during my last project. Because the canvas is vertical and the palette horizontal, the light hits the pigments on each of them at different angles, which can subtly change the appearance of the hue, value and chroma, and make mixing more of a challenge than it should be. And my solution, inspired by David Kassan's parallel palette, which he did a Kickstarter for back in 2015, but to my knowledge is no longer available, was to build a wooden support that could clamp onto the side of my easel, holding in place a vertical glass pallet right next to my canvas. The glass is supported by this shelf, which also helps to prevent any paint from dripping onto the floor, and is held in place by magnets, which attach to two steel strips glued to the back. The board has a three-quarter inch thread T-nut in the middle, which screws on to a photography magic arm, which clamps onto my easel. It works brilliantly, and this is how you make one. And for the project, you will need a 9 by 12 inch glass palette, a 23 by 32 centimeter plywood board, a small rig magic arm and clamp, a quarter inch thread T nut, a 20 by 2 millimeter steel strip, an 11 by 25 millimeter oak strip, six neodymium magnets, a 15 millimeter washer, araldite rapid two-part epoxy glue, two millimeter, five millimeter, and eight millimeter drill bits, a countersink bit, 16 millimeter and 20 millimeter flat wood bits, wood glue, two clamps, a hacksaw, a small hammer, a metal file, a small sharp chisel, three 25 by 3.5 millimeter countersink screws, meths, a scalpel, a ruler and pencil, 220 grit sandpaper, Osmo Pollux oil, a small brush, an electric drill, and a workbench or suitable table. I chose the nine by 12 inch gray tone posh palette, that's actually what it's called, by New Wave, despite it being quite expensive at 25 pounds because it did just tick all of the boxes of what I was looking for. It's just the right size, any bigger would be a bit unwieldy and probably a bit heavy for the arm. And I wanted grey tone backing because it's better for mixing lighter value colours. However, you could use a white or clear one if you prefer from this or another brand. I just removed these rubber bits from the corners, very carefully using the flat edge of a scalpel, making sure to avoid scratching the surface and filed down the edges using 220 grit sandpaper. I purchased this lovely birch ply board, pre-cut to my custom size, from a company called the Natural Wood Workshop, which saved me having to muck around chopping up timber. And you can get a discount from them using the link below. Alternatively, you could use any hardware store that offers a cutting service, like b and Q here in the UK. If you're on a budget and you prefer to cut your own, a circular bench saw is by far the best way to get a good clean finish. Alternatively, you could use a hand saw or a jigsaw, but the finish won't be as good. Next, take the steel strip and measure out and mark two 28 centimeter lengths. Clamp it to the workbench, make the cuts using a hacksaw, then use a metal file to soften the sharp edges. Lay the strips on the back of the glass, running up either side, with a centimetre gap around the edges, and draw around them in pencil. 
On a piece of cardboard, mix enough araldite for one strip. Apply it evenly to one side, then adhere it to the glass where you marked. Check from the side as well as the top to make sure the strip is glued flat, applying pressure to even it out if necessary, then leave to dry. If you make a mess, whilst the glue is still active, you can wipe it off with a cloth and some meths. Then do the other side. It sets in 15 minutes, so go relatively quickly, but without rushing. Now you could use a different type of glue if you like, but two-part epoxy is perfect for this application. Next, measure a 22.3 centimeter length of oak strip wood, i.e. the same width as the pallet. Make the cut using a hacksaw, then tidy up the edges with some sandpaper, making sure to go with the grain. Place the glass pallet onto the board and position it so that it has an even border all around it. Position the strip wood underneath and draw around the bottom in pencil. Remove the glass, double check the wood is straight and correctly centered and then draw around the top. Remove the strip wood, then measure and draw a line across the exact center of the rectangle. Within this, mark three spots for the screw holes, one in the middle and one on either side a centimeter in from the edges. Clamp the board to the workbench and drill through where you marked using a two millimeter bit. Make sure the bit goes dead straight through the wood by looking from the side. Then use the countersink bit to bore a conical hole for the screw head to fit into. Apply a line of wood glue across the bottom of the strip wood and use a piece of card to spread it evenly across the whole surface. Carefully adhere it to the board precisely within the rectangle and secure it in place with a clamp next to the middle hole. Check the strip wood is still correctly positioned and wipe away any excess glue using a very lightly dampened cloth. Turn the board upside down and clamp it to the workbench. So that you know how deep to drill, visually line up the two millimeter bit halfway down the strip wood and wrap a piece of masking tape around it in line with the top of the board. Very carefully drill through the central hole up to the tape. Now it's really important that these drill holes go precisely into the center of the strip wood, particularly on the short side or the screw will break out. So take your time and again make sure to look from the side as you drill and don't go further in than the tape. Then screw it in without over tightening. Unlock the clamp, tighten it by the next hole and make sure the strip wood is still correctly aligned. Insert the screw, again without over tightening, then repeat the process on the other side. Next, use a ruler to locate the center of the board. Mark this in pencil, clamp it to the workbench and drill through using a two millimeter bit. Then use a 20 millimeter flat bit to cut out a circle one to two millimeters deep. Use a small sharp chisel to neatly carve the center flat. A birch is quite soft, so there's no need to use a hammer. Just carefully use your hands, always cutting away from you. Flip the board over again and repeat the process exactly the same on the rear, but this time using a 16 mm flat bit. Then using an 8 mm bit, drill through the middle to widen the hole for the T-nut to fit into. This is a bit fiddly as the center of the bit has nothing to grab onto at this point, but it doesn't need to be perfect. Mix up some araldite and dab a small amount of it around the holes on both sides. Next, take the T-nut and hammer it into place. On the rear, just make sure the washer is correctly aligned with the thread of the T-nut and leave to dry. Next, measure the distance between the center of both metal strips and draw two lines lightly in pencil, the same distance apart on the front of the board. Measure out and mark three points on each line, level with each other at top, bottom and middle for the magnets. Clamp the board to the workbench and drill through each of them using the two millimeter bit. Then flip it over and use the five millimeter bit to go back through the other side. This is to avoid splintering. As before, 
use the 16mm flat bit to cut out a neat circle a millimetre or two deep. Then carve out the centre with a chisel. Mix up some araldite, apply it around the holes and glue in the magnets. Wipe away any excess glue using meths and a cloth or kitchen roll and allow to dry. Finally, carefully go over the whole thing, tidying it up. Rub out any pencil marks and give it a light sand, just being careful not to scratch the magnets. Then, using a small brush, apply a thin coat of Osmo Pollux hard wax oil all over. Now you could use a different brand or type of oil or varnish if you like, but hard wax oil does work really well and it's relatively safe and easy to use. Now place something under each corner to raise it up so that air can circulate around it. I use disposable chopsticks and leave to dry. When it's ready, the magic arm screws into the back of the board and the clamp attaches nicely onto the side of my easel. It's possible to move the board into various different positions and angles and tightening the central joint makes the whole thing go rigid. Now, there are several different makes of these arms available, some a bit cheaper, some a lot more expensive. I bought this one by Small Rig purely because it was well reviewed on Amazon and it works pretty well. Once tightened up, it stays firmly enough in place, though I wouldn't want to put too much more weight on it. Now, you could alternatively use a camera tripod. The thread size is the same. I just prefer using an arm because it's neater and it doesn't get in the way and I'm tight for space in my small studio. If you need to clean it up or store it overnight in an airtight pallet box or the fridge, you can easily detach it without having to completely dismantle it. After that, all that's left to do is to test it out with a quick piece. Here I'm making a copy of Adolfo Hohenstein's stunning Birra Italia poster from 1906. Copying masterworks like this is a brilliant way to improve your technique. And in this case, because of the colour matching required, it's also a great way to test out the palette. Overall, I'm really happy with it. It certainly does make mixing and matching colours much easier. Personally, I'll use mine in conjunction with a second horizontal glass palette on a table to one side. And that's it. Links to everything in the description below. If you decide to make one for yourself or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit subscribe. And until next time, ciao.